After you have finished playing most of the games, at least all of the quests, such as in my case, I was 85% complete because I didn't do a couple of the bonus quests. Anyway, once you log in, you can click now on the workshop. When you get to the workshop, you click on build a new game. What comes up next is a little grid and you can see in the palette on the left, there's quite a lot of information here. This is a little group of all the things I have particularly earned, such as the different sprite. I also have the little dots or the points. There's a health meter, a scorekeeper, a timer, and bonus points. So I have enough here to get me started. Okay, once I've reviewed everything that I have available to me, and there's quite a few things, the first thing that I suggest you do is go into your settings for your new game. And on this page are the little intro messages and the messages that you create for when you want, when someone has won your game. So if you want to put a new game in there, I'm going to call mine nature escape and the standard message that the game gives to you is welcome gamer are you prepared for this challenge that's okay I'm just gonna leave that as it is and then when you've won the game congratulations you've conquered this game and goals and rules that's for when you're ready to write in here what the goal is and what the rules are for your game for each level. So for now I have enough and I'll hit save. On level one you can start working on your settings for that and you can add new levels by clicking the plus new button. But we have one level right now and you decide what you'd like to say, what you'd like to come up when the person is clicking the different things to play your game. So first of all welcome to level one that's fine. And then once the person has won level one, way to go, that level was no match for you. So that's fine. Now this here is interesting. Platformer or top down, you decide which view you would like. So for top down, of course, you're just looking at the, the screen. Platformer, it's always at the bottom so that the, the player can be like bouncing along from bottom to top and going up different levels that way which I didn't do one of those I did a top-down perspective for mine for your first game you might want to make it top-down just to keep it simple and scrolling of course is if you have to keep going to the side to get to the next area because it's long I just kept it with single screen because it's a little bit easier again so I'm gonna save those settings I have to start building my background. On the right hand side are several different icons and those are to help you build your game. Now that you know what your components are over here and now that you've made some settings and uh, looked at your level one settings, there's this arrow key and that allows you to pick up a block and place it. All I'm doing is moving my mouse and left clicking and it's dropping these little blocks. I might want a different block so let me try a white block for the next part of this. This is just very simplistic what I am building here just to give you an idea of how to use the different tools. Now if I don't like something that I just, like if I want to move this block here, I'm going to click the X and I place it over the block that I want to remove and click. You can make the game as difficult, as complicated, or as simple and easy as you like. Just for purposes of teaching this, 
how to use GameStar. I'm just going to try and make it as simplistic as possible. Let me go back to my placing tool and I'm going to put a layer of grass at the bottom of the screen here just to show you that if I was making a platform type of game this would be my base area. But if you're doing a top-down game you can still have a layer of grass if you want. I did for mine I believe at the top. I'm going to pick dirt. Once again, if I decide I don't like something, I want to take a block or two out. I just use the X. And for this layer, I'm just trying to make it simple, but I can see already I'm going to be running into problems because there's not enough room for something to get for my avatars to get in here. So I will remove this group and I will use the eyedropper on this because this way it just continues on with the same color and design that was already established there. While I'm at it, I think I should get rid of that. So you want to have enough space in between your blocks for your avatar to be able to work. Okay, so I have a basic little framework there. It's not very complicated and it's not very attractive. Later on, you can add other things. I think I want to find myself a little scout or avatar. I think the one I have is here. I can put him there. No worry about him in a moment. Where do I want to place my goal block? Okay, let's take it and <clears throat> Since I have grass down here, and I'd like the player to get to the grass, I'm going to place my gold block right there. And for this, I'm going to click the health meter, and it's so far it's set for three lives. So my little avatar here can get taken out three times. Now I want to place the little points for the avatar to pick up on his or her way down to the grass. So I'm going to do a whole bunch of them. All I did was click on the dot with my arrow tool, pick up the dots and start placing them. Once you've placed enough dots for the avatar to pick up for your game, I think I need a timer in here, don't I? Let's put the timer. It's set for one minute. You can edit these settings too. Once you've added a few things like timers and health, you can choose a quest background. I'm going to choose, well, maybe this blue background. Not sure what my blocks will look like up against it, but you can change it anytime you want. So I change the background. Music. I'm going to pick the Navarone Safari music. I think I used that music before. Okay, well, this doesn't look bad. The little dots are not really lost in the background. This is the part you have to be concerned about so that the player of your game, who will play it eventually, can see everything they need to see. I'm going to save all of this and it's good to save your game periodically and you can try it out by hitting play. Okay and to test your own game just use your arrow keys start picking up the dots with your avatar and this is a very easy level that I've created here For your first level, you might want to create something really easy as well and then add chasers later on. And my little avatar got to the block and see the little sign, way to go, that level was no match for you, pops up. Once you've decided that everything is right about this level that you've created, go ahead and save it by clicking the save button at the bottom. 
And then you're going to have to go back and do a little bit of editing. If you remember, we needed to change our game intro message and we need to change our game win message because these are actually the defaults here and if you want to publish this game you need to change it game intro message is a little bit different I didn't do much with it but you can do whatever you like for the game win message I'm going to put nice job and for the goals and the rules I have to tell the player what to do I'm gonna hit save and next to the save button there is the publish button and it looks like make sure that we've completed all the following and we have so go ahead click the word publish and it looks like your game is published now I have only made one level to this one you can add levels to yours by clicking the plus new level and I think you're on your way to having a very successful game with this terrific program, GameStar Mechanic.